Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, the drought has finally broken and we have a fresh Linux distro to look at. It has been a while. Now, Pop OS 21.04. This release is monumental for a few different reasons, but primarily, Cosmic Desktop. It's a continuation of what Pop OS has been doing for some time, and that is offering a slightly more power user friendly and productive version of the GNOME desktop. So today I'm going to jump in, we're going to have a look around and I'll share with you my opinions of where I think this distro sits, who it's for, what features it brings to the table and uh, what I think of it overall. So let's jump in. So there is quite a bit to talk about in this release and I, to be honest I've been waiting for several distributions to come out of beta for quite some time, Pop OS being one of them, because they wanted to make sure that they had done this right. And to be fair I think they've done a pretty great job uh, iterating and uh, expanding on some of the themes that they had started uh, developing in the last production cycle of Pop OS. Now as you may or may not know, uh, Pop OS has been kind of bolting on new features and functionality in the form of different dedicated GNOME extensions for their desktop experience. Now it is still based on uh, Ubuntu 21.04, which means you will only get nine months of support. And Pop OS is using these iterative or interim development cycles to improve on their own desktop shell so that everything is nice and shiny by the time we get to the long-term support release, which will replace the Ubuntu 20.04 cycle that's now a bit over a year old. Now, where that lands with this particular system is that you have a shell that is based on GNOME shell 3.38.5. Uh, now, this is to say that it is the last available version before they have to move in some form or other to GNOME 40 and GTK 4. So it'll be interesting to see the lifespan of some of these changes, given the fact that a lot of GTK distributions are gonna to have to figure out how to move into GTK 4 moving ahead. Ubuntu has got its own set of problems in that regard. Um, as Fedora fully embraces whatever comes from vanilla upstream, uh, they don't have any problems in this regard. They just roll with whatever the GNOME's rolling with. But it's interesting to see as these different desktops diverge, uh, this affects desktops like Elementary, like Pop OS, like Ubuntu, who all have their own version of what they think the GNOME desktop or how they can customize the GNOME desktop for their users. And Pop OS does this probably more uh, than any other GNOME based distribution that's not using its own dedicated shell. Well, I guess it kind of is now because that's what Cosmic does. All right, let's break it down. So uh, I've tried to avoid a lot of the press and uh, and lead up to this release. I'm kind of going in with fresh eyes as it were, but here's what I make of it. In the first instance, you get a welcome screen, which gives you a quick tour of the desktop and allows you to automatically uh, toggle some options for the desktop on or off. For example, you get a bottom panel or dock, depending on whether you prefer a panel or a dock. Uh, they're all center oriented and you get the option of including the applications button and the workspace button up on the top left. You then have the choice of choosing your time and date in either the middle of the top panel or over to the left or the right. I chose to go with the right. And then that will also house your notifications. And then you also obviously still have the tiling windows functionality that they had in the previous release of Pop! OS in 20.10, I believe. So there is a lot of fun to be had in Pop! OS with just how much functionality they built in to both the mouse navigated workflow and also the keyboard navigated workflow. And as best as I can gather from the uh, documentation that's available on their website, it seems to be that Pop! OS is really chasing the productivity or creation crowd. Now, not creator in the YouTube, uh, Instagram creator sense, but in the using a computer to do computery things sense of creator. That's a really butchered title, but we'll roll with it for now. So here's what I'm really liking about what I'm seeing in Cosmic as a desktop environment or as a desktop shell to move around in. First of all, it gives you, it gives the end user a lot of options to move things around as they wish. There's no mandatory 
workflow that you have to follow here, you can definitely set this up to what makes sense for you. Also, there's a lot of work that the team have done to surface a lot of the uh, controls and abilities that were already in the GNOME desktop to the end user. But here are the things that stand out to me the most. First of all, the work that they do on uh, having a keyboard driven interface is probably one of the best out there. Aside from going to a full tiling window manager and foregoing a lot of the features and polish that you get in a fully fledged desktop environment, uh, Pop! OS is probably the closest thing that you will get to the workflow of a tiling desktop that you can get in the Linux world. And it was interesting that Windows 11, uh, when that launched and they were demoing some of their window tiling features, they were bragging that this is the most flexibility that anybody's ever seen on a desktop when clearly Pop! OS exists and has been tiling windows really nicely for quite some time. And it all revolves around a really well thought out set of shortcuts. So it all revolves around the Windows key or the super key on your keyboard. You type that, you type the name of a app that you want to launch. And when your windows are tiled automatically, it will automatically open them side by side. You then use the windows key to toggle which windows you have open and you can switch between them using again, keyboard shortcuts. You can even perform Google searches. So if I was to uh, search up a, a certain YouTube channel, it'll do that for me. If I wanted to bring another application into the mix and start moving some of these around, I can select them by holding the super key and using the arrow keys to toggle between the windows that are open. You can also use the alt tab key if you're used to that and you can choose to float specific windows in your workflow if you choose to. Now, the other thing that I really appreciate about this is that the barrier to entry on a lot of tiling window managers can be quite high. There is quite a learning curve involved and often the keyboard shortcuts are abundantly clear to the user. Like I mentioned about a couple minutes ago, Pop! OS does a great job of surfacing some of these more power user friendly features to the top of the desktop so that you can actually learn some of these things. Now this is really useful for somebody like me who's not really dabbled much in tiling window managers. It's just not my thing. But the fact that they're really clear with what keyboard shortcuts do and how you can make good use of them uh, is really helpful. Now, to me, the gaps that they leave around the windows by default are a little bit irksome, but not to worry because there are settings built right into the little toggle, which you can increase or decrease those gaps as your heart desires. And if you're done with tiling window managing for the day, you just turn it off and the windows go back to where they were before. Now, it's also great to see once again that this distribution has added some trackpad uh, multi-touch gestures into the mix as well. So switching workspaces works really well now just by using the trackpad as opposed to uh, relying on the keyboard at all times. But obviously the keyboard shortcuts are still there. I've always appreciated, if you've watched any of the videos that I've done on Pop! OS in the past, I've always appreciated the keyboard shortcuts that Pop! OS chooses to use by default. I'm not entirely sure if this particular keyboard settings section is custom to Pop! OS or whether it's just presented a bit differently from what I've seen in other GNOME based desktops. But the fact that you can come in here and not only see obviously the keyboard shortcuts for the entire system baked in, but it's very easy to change those shortcuts or set up custom ones yourself. Some of the defaults that they have like this super key and Q to quit or close the current window are ones that I intentionally change on whatever desktop I'm using to map to those keys. They also tend to use other familiar keyboard shortcuts like super T to open the terminal. So you get a really good blend of keyboard productivity with plenty of good options with your trackpad slash mouse as well. So I've said a lot of nice things about Pop! OS already, and there is a few more nice things to come in terms of the basic pieces of an operating system that we come to expect. Obviously, you will have to update this distribution in a matter of about nine months, but Pop! OS has their own fantastic tool, custom built, that you can in place upgrade your Pop! OS system from version to version. Uh, I have not personally tried this tool, but from what I can find out, it seems to be fairly solid. Let me know if you're upgrading in the comments below about how your experience went. Also, a lot of the power that the installer brings to the table 
uh, and a lot of the polish that you find there is uh, is through uh, a, a nice partnership between Pop OS and the elementary OS team uh, that also benefits in the form of the Pop Shop, which is basically the uh, app center uh, on elementary OS. I think Pop OS have been really responsive to the preferences that a lot of their user base have with what kind of software they would like available for their system. And what I'm finding is that a lot uh, that Pop OS actually packages a lot of software above and beyond what's available in the Ubuntu repositories. You just got to appreciate this is work and man hours and quality assurance that has to go into this thing before it gets shipped off on System 76's own hardware. And you, the end user, definitely benefit from that. Now, by the looks of things, with their software sources, they have the default mirror um, of Ubuntu that is set there. And I'm hoping that you can change what that mirror is or add a different mirror. And it also appears that we do have FlatHub integration out of the box, which is nice to see. Now, here's some comments that I'll make just about the general look and feel of Pop OS. In my opinion, Pop OS has a definite, consistent, recognizable and well-branded uh, experience across the whole desktop. It is a little funky that when you right click to change the background of the desktop, you get met with custom desktop settings, which I'll get into in just a second, but you actually have to go to the background section to change the background. They have great wallpapers that suit the personality of the brand and the distribution. They have a great dark mode and light mode, which are well thought out and seem to work pretty well across the board. And they have a lot of great granular settings that allow the desktop to be customized well beyond what GNOME will let you out of the box. The fact that all of these settings are baked into the, the one settings app is amazing. And I know from talking with other developers that it's quite difficult to actually integrate other custom settings panels into the default GNOME settings. So I'm not really sure uh, what's what the deal is here with Pop OS, whether they've been able to just put the man power into uh, developing these custom sections for their OS. But that polish really, uh, really shows. It would be great to see desktops like Zorin OS, for example, be able to integrate a lot of their desktop settings into the main GNOME settings app. And maybe that is the flexibility that Cosmic Desktop, having their own desktop shell, maybe that's the flexibility that that gives them. The one thing I will say about their look and feel is that while I think it's very distinct and it, it, the branding is nice, I do feel like it is starting to feel a bit dated. And that's just my personal opinion with what I like about current design trends and all that sort of thing. It might not be for you. And then I do have questions about theming compatibility and theme availability for people to customize their own look and feel of their desktop. Because nowadays, uh, with some of the options out there, especially KDE Plasma and the rest of them, it's very, very easy to go and get other themes and other looks and feels for your desktop. Uh, Pop OS definitely doesn't want to uh, throw those features wide open to the user, it would seem, things like accent colors. So I am curious moving forward with as GNOME 40 and GTK 4 continues to move forward, I'm curious as to see uh, whether a custom theme engine, custom theme store will be necessary for desktops like Pop OS that are choosing to use GNOME 3.38 point something. Uh, to keep their desktop rolling or whether they're just going to fork it completely and head off in their own direction. So I guess there are some longevity questions there and definitely some customization questions there that will need to be answered at some point. And I'm guessing they'll, that's probably the sort of stuff they want to figure out before the long-term support release is available. In terms of pre-installed software, it's a relatively light on distribution. There's not a whole lot going on here beyond some custom utilities here in the utilities folder, things like the pop school USB flasher and Eddie from the elementary OS store to install your dev files. And the performance of the desktop shell seems to be pretty snappy right now. I've got it in a virtual machine, but having tried it on this hardware natively, uh, it does run really smoothly. And obviously you still get the option of choosing either the Intel AMD version or the Nvidia version to go and download to give it a whirl. So closing thoughts. I think this is the most power user friendly version of the GNOME desktop that you can find. If you're finding yourself either uh, wondering where to turn to with the advent of a more simplified and uh, streamlined GNOME 40. You're looking for a few more features to be able to cut your teeth into. 
uh, then Pop OS, I think, is going to be a great option for a lot of people. The hardware support that System76 continue to bring to the table, their power management tools are really great. Their management of drivers, OS recovery and updates are all top notch and they're all birthed from having to manage an OS that runs on a company's hardware as well as developing the software for it. So will this desktop still be around in quite a few years time? I think so. And it's great to see them create their own custom desktop shell and run with it. Now, if you're not crazy about GNOME, I would say wait this one out and see what happens with the long-term support releases due in around about a year's time or so. And I think we'll get a bit more clarification around uh, some of these questions of uh, theming, customization, and what is going to be the technology stack that powers Cosmic Desktop into the future. Hey, Blaine here. Thanks for checking out the Infinitely Galactic project. Look, if you want to find more videos like this, then definitely go check out the channel, subscribe if you're new, turn on notifications, all that good stuff, and you can chat with me on Twitter at Ingalactic. See you in the next one.